This is Pipe Electric Welding Shop number 3 in autumn 2007, when it did not yet exist. And this is it in summer 2010. In those three years, the shop was not only built and renamed, its creation marked the beginning of major change, not only at Chul Pipe or in the Urals, but the source of most of the nation's metals, and not only in Russia, but in the metals industry as a whole. For a long time we had wanted to conduct a project in which people worked all in white and to make the metals industry clean enough to work in white clothing. We decided to call the project White Coated Metallurgy. What else? White Coated Metallurgy is about not only colour but also the environment, high-tech equipment, skilled employees and people with a completely different mentality. White Coated Metallurgy also represents a new consciousness especially regarding people's approach to their profession, level of knowledge and attitude to work. While someone came up with the name White Coated Metallurgy quickly during the project design discussions, the new facility took a long time to christen. A competition among employees was even held. Different options were tried, including some based on the geographical location of this project of the century. And it transpired that Chelabinsk is 239 metres above sea level, while all of our competitors are at heights of 15, 40 and 80 metres. We were interested by the idea that this height was well beyond their reach, and we thought that Visota 239 captured people's attention. It reflects Chelabinsk's actual location above sea level, and that point is somewhere in the middle of the facility, so we should also be able to reach it somehow on the ground here. Chul Pipe has been manufacturing pipes for almost 70 years. Trying something new is traditional for plants. Here, in the 1960s, the first large diameter pipes in the Soviet Union were produced. Since those times, the drive to move forward and do something different from everyone else has only intensified. To see this, all you need to do is visit the plant. War has been declared on everything that is drab, monotone and depressing. Bright, rich paint is in use everywhere, together with a constructivist and supremacist combination of geometric figures. When building the new facility, those in charge of the project decided not to restrain their vision. Even photos of Visata 239 could be framed and hung. The task of designing the new shop was given to a company in St. Petersburg. In its 85-year history, Lengi Promyoz has designed dozens of metal production facilities in Russia, former Yugoslavia, Asia and even Africa. The task for the designers was perfectly clear. We chose the most modern approach available today, battling scale and the coating that we put on the set. This facility is the most modern in terms of productivity, output and range. It is the most modern in existence today. Russia is home to the largest gas reserves and the second largest oil reserves in the world. In 2009, it was the number one producer of hydrocarbons. Oil and gas form the base for developing the economy, and Russia shares its energy resources with neighbors generously. Work and plans are underway to build over 20,000 kilometers of pipelines. In Russia, and to China and Europe, including along the bottom of the Baltic and Black Seas. In this environment, producing large diameter pipes is not only a task for industry and business, it is part of the development strategy of the whole state and the philosophy behind creating Visata 239. This philosophy is based on one word, quality, or more precisely, reliability. 
This is because most of the country's pipelines are laid in areas of high potential seismic activity or with permafrost, as well as along the seabed. It is impossible to return to a depth of 1,000 metres and repair something if it goes wrong, as it is on Gazprom's and Transneft's routes that are being built using unmanned technology, where the average temperature is negative. This means that if something happens, perish the thought, everything will freeze. Hence such demands for quality, control operations and technological solutions like these are unparalleled worldwide. Employees at Chillpipe have seen how important the plant's work is for the whole country. In autumn 2008, when the global economic crisis erupted, construction of the new facility almost ground to a halt. This project has cost around 21 billion rubles. While we invested some of our profit in the project, most of the funds were sourced externally. In November 2010, we received government guarantees and around 5 billion rubles backed by the state from Gazprom Bank to complete the project. During the crisis, the government provided tremendous help. Without it, we would have been stranded. We would now have been in an unfurnished shop and on the edge of a cliff, legally speaking. But the government extended its hand in support, as it did to many companies in the crisis. I am confident that we will repay all of the state guarantees on schedule. And, of course, we are grateful. The break in the metals industry came alongside a mini-revolution in industrial design. The responsibility for Visota 239's exterior was given to a studio with a name that is wild and almost yobbish in Russian, Yo Program. Over the three years of work on the project, the studio's designers produced thousands of sketches for the shop overall, covering every corner and every detail. In terms of an industrial design in architecture, this is probably a first for us. In Russia. In Russia, no doubt. Not only for us at your program. The new shop already had a name, and an unusual one. But the project managers decided to create a new logo as well. Here you can see a bit of creativity, by which I mean the solutions that were proposed. In the end, we chose this sign. Do you remember X and Y in maths at school? So this is height. And the shop is like a rising sun of the Russian metals industry. This is all about certain stereotypes that exist in Russia, how something should be done. For example, if a facility is involved in metals, it should be painted green. In the event, this can be done differently. In particular, our task was to make the shop bright, because all metal production facilities in Russia are always extremely dark and depressing, right? I'm referring to the skylights, those up there, which let sunlight in. Should we install these lights or not? These are more expensive, these are cheaper, and why do we need so much light for making pipes after all? In the end, we install them, and everyone says, we told you that it would look great. Looking great is no argument when justifying a project financially. Was it worth spending vast amounts on something that could have been done in the old way, for less money? Well, we needed to brighten up the technology anyway. The workers need clothes in which to work. So we simply replace the colors usually found in the industry with brighter and fresher ones, which also reflects our internal beliefs about this project. The project was relaunched in November 2009. Winter was coming, and one of the most severe in decades. In such conditions, work outside is kept to a minimum, but not at Cholpipe. The weather is okay now, it's only minus 15 centigrade. When it was minus 30 outside, there were problems, naturally. The carcasses iced up. Some equipment would not start and people would go to warm up more. But overall, though, everything was all right. A 21st century project cannot be completed by old, experienced personnel alone. New employees were chosen from higher educational institutes throughout the country. 
In the end, a competition to replace engineers produced around 10 new people. Of the many people working at Visata 239 today, two are responsible for everything. One of them is Kirill Tsibin, a graduate from the University of Maine in the US. Responsibility for completing this grandiose project was given to a 26-year-old manager. Naturally, this was the first project of its kind for me, and it's probably the largest project in the metals industry this year. It is unique in that alongside huge pieces of equipment, extreme precision and a high level of automatization are needed. Throwing around large bits of equipment is easy, but doing so accurately, so that everything works automatically afterwards, is probably the most difficult aspect of this project from a technological perspective. Another difficulty was the schedule for commissioning the shop. The work began properly after the financing arrived in November 2009. And the date for producing the first pipe was set as the 17th of July 2010, Metals Day. Quality is our first priority because we understand that there are nine months from November to July. But the shop will be functioning for another 20, 30 or 40 years. As such, we cannot afford to be undermined by slow action. Project managers should not be responsible for every work. They control subordinates. Sometimes there are over 1,000 people on the construction site. Overall, the main headache was setting up the system. When there is a system, there is design documentation and a contractor, and things start to become tangled. Tsiben is due to hand the completed facility over to Valentin Tazidinov, who is responsible for its operations. However, this does not mean that the head of Visata 239 will arrive to find everything ready. It is easier to say how much time I spend outside here, because this is my place of work. Through both choice and necessity, I spend most of my working hours here. There is nothing I would not be involved in. All of the technology used in this shop, in line with its philosophy, should meet the standards of the day before yesterday at a minimum. Today, we can say that there is virtually no equipment like this anywhere in the world, not in any other shop. However, this does not mean that there are particularly new things here. All the differences are in minor details, literally in a few features. But the combination of these features results in a completely new quality and reliability of products that we can manufacture here. One of these features is cleanliness. The people who look after this at Visata 239 are none other than the installers and commissioners. Keeping things clean is crucial for us. Tidiness is not even an instrument, it is simply a way of life, because product quality and the stability of technological schedules are inseparable from cleanliness and order of production. You cannot manufacture quality products in dirty facilities. You cannot manufacture quality products where there is chaos in the management plan, where workers do not know what to do, where managers cannot manage employees, set objectives and ensure that they are fulfilled. One major difficulty was ensuring that all of the equipment started working on time, that it moved, functioned and reached its target schedules within extremely short time frames, and that we began manufacturing the pipes envisaged in this year's production plan. This marks the beginning of a new, unique style of project management. Other people, who do not smoke and undergo testing for alcohol every morning, as well as dress differently, work in other conditions. They are paid a different salary based on other principles. This is the main thing. These people are capable of carrying out other unique projects. They have energy, knowledge and experience. That is what is special here. People are extremely motivated to work on our shop because the working conditions have been made as comfortable as possible and they are unparalleled in our group and throughout Russia. We even have special requirements regarding working with technology, including alcohol testing, which is carried out at the beginning of each shift, so people working in different units feel safe. I like this a lot, 
and the thought of finding a new job or position does not even cross my mind. I just really like working here. Not only Russians work at Visata 239. The people responsible for installing and launching every set are representatives of the supplier, the German company SMS Mir. There are only a few suppliers of such equipment and we chose the most sophisticated on the market. We traveled virtually the whole world. We spent a long time deciding on the equipment components and all of our ideas were represented in this equipment. SMS Mir sent around 50 specialists to Chelyabinsk. The team leader is Ralph Young, who is on his third project in Russia. This order is one of the largest that SMS Mir has ever undertaken, and it is a very important one, as we are supplying all of the production mechanisms, so we have a direct influence on the quality of the pipes. While the Russian and German specialists are working on one project, their mentality is different. Most people agree that this does not affect the results of their work, although it is evident. For example, as a German company, we check that our equipment has been installed correctly, with all the necessary allowances and in the time needed, without hurrying. The Russian mentality is that everything should be done quickly. Sometimes, but not often, there are instances when the difference in mentality causes a spark. But where has joint work enabled tension and minor clashes to be avoided? For example, we were on that large press. Some parts had been mislaid at the warehouse. When we asked for them to be located, our colleague replied, yes, I am looking. But we didn't know where he was looking. But if we went to the warehouse, we would be looking in the right place. Sometimes the reaction is a little blunt, such as now, when deadlines are being brought forward. Nonetheless, we all laughed about it when the parts were found. The obligations of the supplier do not end at startup. Like the Russians, the Germans want to be proud of this project. This is what our reputation is based on. We leave a facility only when the client is satisfied with the installation. In any case, we remain in place and will resolve all issues together with Shellpipe. The events at Visata 239 are not taking place on the walls alone. Transporting equipment from Europe to Chelyabinsk is a unique operation. In 2009, two parts for an 18-meter press, each weighing 180 tons, were shipped from Germany to Rotterdam. From there, they went by sea to St. Petersburg and then along the Neva, Volga and Kama rivers to the port town of Nizhny Muli near Perm. And in 2010, a 12-meter press was delivered from the French town of Le Croiseau to the port of Fossumer, then via the Mediterranean and Black Seas and the Sea of Azov to Azov, and then along the Don, Volga and Kama rivers to Nizhny Muli. But how were they transported further? Rail platforms cannot carry such heavy bars, and it is another 600 kilometers to the destination. Transport would have to be by road, which involves crossing the Ural Mountains with long climbs and steep drops, as well as going through three large cities, Perm, Yekaterinburg and Chelyabinsk. In places, the roads needed widening and bridges strengthening. And there were other issues. The heaviest part, the upper section of the 12-meter press, was delivered in early spring. It weighs 240 tons and was transported on a so-called buggy. Only this buggy has 28 axles and 8 wheels on each one, or 224 wheels in all. However, on the first freezing day of the move, both haulers broke down. And after being serviced only recently, now the convoy is four days behind schedule. Behind the wheel of main hauler is Vacheslav Milishkin, who has been driving heavy-duty vehicles for 34 years. Special shipments are nothing new to him, although 240-ton loads are a rarity. There are lots of risks. Everything is due to complacency by oncoming drivers. They don't give way and they stare at the load. The road hasn't been greeted. At times, we have had to drop back or drive away as there was no enough power to climb. You need to pay attention, attention and attention. 
Accompanying the driver in the main hauler is the head of the convoy, Vladimir Shifrin, who is responsible for completing the delivery, which means everything. As such, he decides who drives in which order, at what speed, where to fill up, how far to travel, and where to stop for the night. Two years were spent planning the route, which was agreed with the road services, the transport police, and the authorities of the regions and cities through which it goes. There are not many predictable difficulties, a couple of weak bridges, and a few bends that need to be navigated slowly by turning each axle separately. There is an old saying that if you have prepared for a journey well, the client will be extremely unhappy because nothing interesting will happen. People arrive, load, reach their destination two days later, and that's it. And people don't understand why so much has been paid and what people have been doing for six months. But if you have prepared badly and you come across rakes at every bend and you become jittery and everyone is running around like cockroaches, the client is pleased, of course, because it is clear that people are working. People have to work. You cannot predict everything. According to the schedule, the convoy should have driven through Yekaterinburg tonight, but it has stopped 40 kilometers from the city. There was some ice on the road for about a kilometer, and it was melting. Now we need to agree on a new route immediately. The main thing is that we're moving forward, and we have already driven almost 320 kilometers. Our contractual obligations and the agreement signed with the delivery company states that both parts should be at the plant by May 15th. And we'll do it. Although the parts for the 12-meter press are still en route, Preparations to install them are well underway at Visata 239. Lev Fedin, technical director of PMK, is in charge of the specialists from the company. The whole process line, which stretches almost one and a half kilometers, will need to work to an accuracy of one-tenth or five-tenths of a millimeter. Is this technically possible and is it necessary? Absolutely. What is the point of not installing equipment accurately? This will result in additional wear and tear caused by knocks and overvoltage while it will not function properly. The greater the accuracy and the more time spent on servicing the equipment, the less it will malfunction and the higher productivity will ultimately be. Installing the 12-meter press is the most complex and critical operation. Chell Pipe has experience of assembling such a unit. An 18-meter press was installed in 2009. However, the parts on a 12-meter press weigh even more. We're witnessing a major event, without exaggeration. What we're seeing right now is a unique technological operation of global significance. To install the press from Dusseldorf, a special large crane has been transported. The so-called mega lift weighs around 200 tons and required nine trucks to deliver. As the number of such cranes in existence can be counted on the fingers of two hands, the mega lift company operates worldwide. This is the third unit that the German specialists are installing at Visata 239. The unique crane is installed and serviced by just four people, who do not even have an interpreter. They and the Russian installers interact like professionals with professionals, using gestures, looks, and a few words they have picked up. For complex situations, there is this young man. Alexander Koenig, an ethnic German, was born in Prokopivsk, in the Kemerova region. In 1996, he and his parents moved to Germany. In the army, the Bundeswehr, he worked with oversized loads and then decided to pursue this as a profession. The roles in the group are distributed fairly arbitrarily. In general, there is no major responsibility. We just need to help and look out for each other together. This is the person who sits at the helm. He oversees all of the system, moving it left, right, up and down. 
The only thing that he supervises is how it moves. There is one person on the right, one on the left, and we watch to ensure that the rail cuts do not move apart so that the floor covering does not fall through anywhere. The average speed of moving using the mega lift is 6 meters an hour. But with parts weighing a couple of hundred tons, it's better not to hurry. The main part of the press is raised, turned around in mid-air, moved and lowered in the space prepared. Not completely though, one more crucial operation remains. The person in charge of the whole installation at Chillpipe is Lev Ivansov, head of shift of the service and maintenance division. He not only supervises, but also photographs every operation, so that if there are any subsequent issues, any part of the process it's still not in place. This process is fairly long and difficult, as that frame weighs 246 tons and it needs to be placed to within around half a millimeter. The mega lift team works 10 to 12 hours a day. In one week, they have managed to install the whole midsection of the press in just over an hour, possibly the most crucial part of the whole construction project will begin. As it's a mega life system, it will work to the extreme of its abilities. The upper part and its cylinders weigh almost 370 tons. The issue is that this side plate has shifted towards the center of the mega lift's bridge, so the load is uneven. In the worst case, we will have to move this part again, so that it is in the center of the lifting device, then raise it to the maximum height and move it through the installation. I do not want any problems, so I always remain positive. This is like building a ship. You have to be positive about everything. Judging by their faces, the people involved in the operation are not stressed, but concentrating. 370 tons of metals is raised into the air and moved towards the center. It is then shifted to the seating position and again moved towards the center. Again it is raised, moved and hangs in the air. Finally, it is lowered. Everything went smoothly as we expected. And quickly. It took us around two hours. The work of the Megalift team is not finished yet. It needs to move another upper beam of the press, which weighs over 100 tons. It feels like something is not right here, but in fact, another innovation is in the making. These presses are already in operation at several enterprises, and they were previously installed using a different method. I personally went to see how this was done, and thought that the method was extremely difficult and time-consuming. In addition, there was a danger of dropping the cylinders from the upper beam. As a result, we've decided to install the cylinders on the upper beam. Something new is rarely completed without problems. But with a bit of engineering sense, inspiration and patience, as well as a strong desire to succeed, the stubborn cylinder is in place. That is how new expertise is acquired. If we consider the whole installation process, we've put that cylinder in place and saved two or three weeks overall. The impression is that only men work at Visata 239. In fact, up above, the whole shop belongs to women who carry out hard physical work. Not with their hands, though, but using ultra-modern, so-called intelligent cranes, which can read barcodes and carry out automated operations independently. But this is when the facility will be in operation. For now, this work requires maximum attention and concentration. When I sat in the crane for the first time, people said you should feel the crane. I laughed thinking, how can you feel a lump of metal like this? But you really feel that it is like a person or an animal, and you understand what it wants from you and what you want from it. 
From morning till night, the crane operator hovers over people milling around below. Does she feel like the queen of the castle? <laughs> no, I'm not the only one. I don't feel like a queen. Launching Visatat 239 would have been more difficult if a proper producer of quality steel sheets for large diameter pipes had not appeared in the Urals. But in summer 2009, Magnitogorsk Iron and Steelworks launched Rolling Mill 5000. We had to start and finish these projects together, but the crisis set us back slightly by one year. And this time Magnitogorsk Iron and Steelworks had finished its grey guide, and we now have around 7,000 tons of quality steel sheets in our warehouse. The steel plates produced at Rolling Mill 5000 must meet the highest quality requirements needed for Chell Pipes products, which now need to function in zones of seismic activity or on the seabed for decades. For the steelmakers in Magnitogorsk, this is also a new challenge. Everything new is already difficult in principle, and mastering new things is also complex. The solution is simply to be persistent. You need to preserve in your work. The new facility is ready to begin life. The people wanting to attend the inauguration are not only those who have spent months creating it, but also veterans of the plant for whom Visota 239 is like a grandchild. At first, the decision is made to celebrate its birth traditionally. I don't even know whether it's a tradition or a law, but when a child is born, the first thing that ever happens is that the child is taken to a church. Why? So that God would know about the child, take it under his protection and lead it throughout the life. Today, you could say, we're presenting to God our huge achievement, our new shop. My sincere congratulations to you on this momentous event, the birth of the new shop. Today we can clearly see and understand that man is great and what he is capable of. The official launch will be a week later. Emphasizing the importance of the new facility for the whole country, the Prime Minister Vladimir Putin visits Chill Pipe. This marks the end of an epic three-year construction project and the beginning of many decades of work for the shop. After tests along the whole of the production line, the first of many sheets are sent to be made into pipes. This facility seems like a work of art. However, art is eternal, and in this era of constant technological revolution, everything changes rapidly. So the natural question is, how long will Visata 239 be at the forefront of progress? In other words, what equipment will be used to make pipes in 10 years? As we say, equipment made from metal will remain the same in any case. But in terms of management, or more simply, brain, they need to change. Just as people need to grow, study, and enhance their knowledge. The same goes for equipment. 
We hope that we will have successes in Russia, and we would be only happy to see this, because the energy in our company is inexhaustible. As such, we are ready to compete on new, indeed any, terms with those who want to try to do so.